Hi there. Welcome to Push and Paint. I'm Jonathan Strong. Today we're going to turn this canvas into a nice mountain valley. I hope you'll grab your paints and follow along with me. Let's get started. I'm going to apologize in advance for my lighting setup. I'm still trying to get used to this whole thing and I've got a whole area in here set up down in the studio. So I'm getting used to it all. Now, first things first, we're going to start by putting a little bit of linseed oil and titanium white on our canvas. Make our sky blend together. It's going to lighten all those colors up, make them nice and vibrant. I'm going to use a good amount of white in this painting. And I've got some big brushes ready to go. So, we're going to start, make sure I don't have any hairs on the brush there, and we're going to just use a little bit of linseed oil and a little bit of white. Now this is primed canvas, pre-stretched, and I went ahead and do a layer of, painted a layer of white gesso over it. Make sure it's nice and smooth. If you get those really heavy brush strokes in there after the gesso dries, <clears throat> you just take some sandpaper and you gently sand it down so it's nice and flat. So I've got my white and my linseed oil. And we're going to just put that right on top. And you'll see it'll pick up this nice shine. If you find you put a little too much on there, just take some paper towel and wipe the excess off. So, you're going to go through a lot of paper towels. Next step is our Prussian blue. Same brush. No big deal. A little bit of blue. And you see what we're doing? We're just kind of pushing some paint. Kind of like the title is just pushing paint into the bristles. And here we go. We start at the top. And you get nice and dark. And you're going to start at the other corner. And you get nice and dark. And these are these big X strokes. And you see how sloppy that looks. Just wait. Okay, we're just going to work that paint around. We're pushing it around the canvas. Okay, I'm going to see how many times I can say push and paint in the series. Okay, just across a few times. And we got our nice blue sky. Into the paint thinner it goes. Okay, we've got our nice sky set up. Our next step, we're going to make some big, puffy, fluffy white clouds. We're taking our fan brush here. A nice, good, long-handled fan brush. And we're going to get it in some white paint. Now, depending on how thick you want to make your clouds, it's how much paint you're going to put on that brush. You see how much I've got there. Okay. So, I'm going to have some relatively fluffy clouds. Now... Remember that clouds are wild things. Uh, one of the things I urge you to do if you feel like painting is when you start to look at the sky more often, really pay attention and look at those clouds. Okay? And you say to yourself, this isn't going to look like a cloud yet. See how much paint I'm putting down. Good amount. Because I want some big white puffy clouds. I'm going to put a few up here. You 
See, I'm just kind of moving that brush around. Okay. For the fun part, <clears throat> we take our blender brush, big soft bristled blender brush, and we're going to work those clouds. So, little circles, we're just going to do little circles. This will tire your arm and your shoulder out. Little circles. focus of this painting is not the sky, this is purely our background, okay? We don't want to focus on the sky, we're going to focus on the rest of the painting, but the sky should look nice and pretty anyway. Okay, so we've got our sky all set up. Now for our next step, we're going to do some really distant mountains. Now when you're doing distant stuff, remember that the atmosphere is going to affect how that looks. So. We're going to make these, this is just a number four filbert brush, see it's got the tapered edge there. And we're just using this to sketch in our mountains. Okay, so we're going to do some real distant stuff. Right. These are super far away. Okay, we're just scratching them in there. Just kind of drawing in what we want. Make them as rough as rocky or as gentle as you like. You know, if you want some more green hills for the background, that kind of thing, you can add little tints of green, but again, most of this stuff is going to be faded away. So we're going to draw that downward. So we're going to pull that paint down. This is oil paint, so this is what it does. It, you can use it to scoot yourself back. Now again, this is stuff that's really far in the background. So, we're not going to have a whole lot of dark. Anytime I make a real dark spot like that, I'm going to draw it out and keep blending that paint down until that makes it nice and misty. And oh, it looks like it's. We can use our right. palette knife, we can use our blender brush, we can use our filbert brush, whatever you want to do. We're going to make a few just very subtle highlights in this. So. You see how I'm tapping the brush there. Okay. Just kind of tapping and twisting. Okay. And what I'm doing is pushing different kinds of paint in there. Now because we've got that linseed oil and the blue and white in the back there, all this is going to mix together with that. And it's going to lighten it up. Now we've already decided where our light source is. It's coming in from this way, but it's over top. So we're gonna have more light on this side, a little bit of shadow, but blue, it's a bright sun, a little brown. Nice and not too bright. Not too, not too saturated, you know, we'll use that term. Not too saturated. But again, I'm just feathering this paint in there. Because this is our shadow to these guys. Mountains have got a sunny side, a shadowy side. And we're going to fix that here in just a second. A little bit, so we're just paying attention to where our lines are. A little bit of brown, we're going to pick that up. You see how it changes just ever so slightly. There we go. Just a bit, a bit on the darker side. Let me just get a little wild with the brush. 
random. Nature makes patterns if you look really closely, but for the most part, nature is wild and random. Okay. I got that there. Little bits of blue. Just kind of blending that the bottom of that hill out. Okay, so this kind of gets lost. I think we're going to move to our next step up. We're moving up into the, into the mid ground here, but not quite. We're, st we're still in background territory, so we're going to keep things nice and light. Okay, we've got some gray. Just a little bit of, tiny bit of white and black mixed together. Little bits of blue, brown. Okay. A little bit of red to warm those up. Okay. We got a palette knife. Palette knife painting is lots of fun. So, again, we're just going to draw our lines on here, basically. So we're going to have a nice little valley coming down here. Okay, and we'll fill this in as we go. Uh, we're going to start... Oh, let's go about here. Not worried too much about exact lines. Okay. But we'll just get some paint on the canvas. And again, this isn't gonna end up too dark. We're gonna we're gonna lighten this up a little bit because it's only our mid-ground. We don't want to go too far. We don't wanna have it too dark. come into a nice valley. It's going to scoop down like that. Now, mountains are so much fun because they're so easy to do. It just takes a little bit of practice to get good at it. And then refining that technique, you know, as you go. You learn a technique, practice with it, get better. And then keep on doing it. And then you learn another technique that adds to it. And then you practice with that one. Get a little better. Just keep on painting. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of white a bit of brown, a bit of the, I should say burnt umber, I should tell you exactly what I'm using. A little bit of the white, a little bit of the burnt umber, a little bit of the raw sienna. We're going to mix those, not much at all. this around the more it starts to take shape it starts to look like something there's something called the hump in any painting and if you've had any any practice painting or really put any time towards painting you know about the hump you might not know what it's called but it's the best way I've heard it described. And the hump is that part of the painting where everything looks terrible. Nothing looks finished, nothing looks right. 
because it's not finished and you're not done. Um, but eventually, that painting starts to take form. Same thing, we're gonna, we're gonna draw this down. Kind of blending it out, softening those edges. All the way up to there if you want. Yeah, we're gonna soften that right down that whole mountain. If you guys can see that, there we go. Of course, you might not want to see it until the end. But if you're watching this just the end, you can just fast forward. I won't be too offended, I promise. So here we're working on our next mid-ground mountain. Uh, just doing some highlights on that one. And I'll just kind of speed through this because I've already shown you the kind of the process here. So just the same kind of thing. Lots of highlights followed by lots of shadows. This is the part where I take a break and uh, let this dry for a day. Uh, there's lots of artists that can paint stuff in an hour and a half or half an hour. Uh, I like to let things sit for a minute and see what develops, you know. So we've got our nice little backdrop set. And tomorrow we're going to come back and work on some mid-ground elements and then we'll do some foreground. So we'll see you then. Okay, we're back, and hopefully my sound is a little bit better. I've got myself a microphone, and hopefully my head doesn't creep into the shot every time I paint. So I want you guys to get a nice close look at this. So, uh, All right, so what you see here, I've got my basic mid-ground land area just kind of drawn in there with the paint. Um, and what we're going to do is put our nice little tree line on the back here. We're going to start with a nice dark mix with some sap green, a little bit of Prussian blue, teensy bit of the ivory black, and this is just going to be our dark tree line that we're going to work in there. So um, these are going to be those distant trees that you're not really going to see quite well. So we're not too worried about detail yet. Um, we're going to put these on. Now the back here is pretty much dry. I didn't really mean for it to get so dry, but yeah, we're just going to put in some back trees here, some nice pines and things. So we just start putting them on there. I'm going to hold the canvas still so it's not wiggling on me. And we're using the corner of the brush and we're just kind of being wild with them. These are just the dark parts of our trees. We put those in first.
Now we're just going to add some highlights to this back area here. So as you can see on my palette, I've got, make sure that's coming through, I've got a spectrum of light green to darker green here. Okay, now I went and mixed some sap green with some Indian yellow, with some yellow ochre in there, a little bit of white towards the very edge, most of that uh, the lemon yellow. And we're just kind of making a spectrum. All right, now we're going to use our fan brush that's a little bit thinner. You can get a close shot of that. The one's kind of beat up. But I like this one for leaves, and we're going to thin that paint out just a bit. Okay, because we got thick paint on here, so we kind of want to get a, a mix. Now, the key to doing this is tiny little bits, okay? Not too much paint. This takes a while, but uh, you're going to do some highlights here. They're going to show where your light's coming from, and little bits of paint, and then you keep going back and changing your color paint. So you're going to go from a light green to a little bit middle green, a little bit darker green, all kinds of different colors so that you get a spectrum of green. Because if you look off into a tree line, you're not seeing one color green and, or two different colors of green. You're actually seeing all different sorts of green. So here we go. Okay, and then we've got kind of our backdrop. So here we're going to start getting a little closer. We're going to get more detail. We're going to start putting more paint on the canvas. We're going to have to make some bold choices, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, now as you'll notice, I'm kind of skipping over a few little parts here, but basically what I'm doing here is just laying in this middle ground, ground, uh, the wall, you know, the, the rolling meadow kind of thing. So we're going to use our fan brush here and clean up this line a little bit and we're just kind of tapping this in uh, in a not completely random manner we've got some just darker greens and some browns mixed with a little bit of blue but we're going to want some grassy kind of stuff but we're not going to see a whole lot of detail because it's so far away so we're mixing some greens and some yellows and we're just kind of tapping those in there and we're just kind of pushing up with the fan brush and we get all kinds of little details showing up but Nothing, nothing too, too crazy. We're just, we're just putting some grass in there, some faraway grass. So, just kind of giving it some texture. You give it that texture, it's going to make it look so much better. Look at it, like, oh, that looks like a grassy meadow on the top of a mountain kind of what we're going for. Again, I'm altering up my colors here a little bit, mixing some yellow in there, mixing some green in there, some sap green, some different colors here. Because <clears throat> the sun's coming down and it's going to change the way that looks. You know, it's going to be all different sorts of greens that you're seeing, all these wonderful springtime colors. Some shadows in there too. Don't be afraid of the shadows. Okay, so now for our first big decision, we're going to put a big, nice kind of, eh, not too big, but you know, a good sized pine tree right up here in our mid ground. Just a nice, scraggly looking pine that we kind of. You know, so what I've got is my detail round brush, and it's got a, and like that, and we can see, I sort of hold my arm here still, so, because I tend to shake a little bit, so, we just kind of 
start going a little. So we've got our trunk. We've got our pine bow sticking out. Now this is a real dark mix. Here we've got uh, some Prussian blue and sap green and a little bit of the ivory black just to make it kind of come forward. Now we're going to also add some highlights and the things to this guy so I say we don't want him to be too big we, but he's we're getting closer we're getting closer to where we would be standing in this painting so but he's not too you know he's growing up on top of the mountain so he's a little scraggly bushes here too you know maybe some bushes now what we're doing here is just putting in the dark parts of the bushes you'd see them all these shadows now again this is one of those things you start to pay attention out in nature you know a little scraggly bush here you know a couple back here and just darks that we're gonna highlight up Every bush and tree and everything else you see out in nature, there's going to be a, a shady part, a light part, maybe a couple wildflower bushes here and there, some wildflower plants. Just we're putting in the shadows first. Okay. Okay. As you can see, I've gotten nice and close up, so hopefully you can see. What I'm doing with the highlights here now, I'm going to get a bit of, just a tiny bit of the mineral spirits, being thinner, on my brush and mix it with this nice kind of lime green color I've got here. That gets it nice up and close. Okay. And we're just going to put a few highlights on these guys just to show. Now, if it doesn't stick and it starts mixing, that means either. A, your paint's too thick, or B, there's too much paint on that canvas already. Now, one thing you can do is lay a piece of shop towel up on that painting very gently and very carefully and let it sit for a bit. And that will absorb some of that oil. Too many dots, but we're just trying to add some little bits of light to these. And we're still paying attention to where our, where our shadows are. We're not going to lose all our shadows. And you're going to look for some. Big dots and some little dots and just kind of keep your imagination up there. You know, we're going to have some highlights over here too because the sun's right up overhead of us. So these highlights are going to help your tree stand out against the background there. Okay, so there we have our mid-ground. I kind of skipped ahead a little bit there, and I realize that I'm doing that, and it doesn't make it easy for you to follow along, but 
just lots of little details okay I switched up my brush a few times and changed it up to a really tiny brush to add some of that trunk in there and you just kind of we see right there we just get a nice collected little mid-ground that looks detailed but not too crazy because again we're going to get to some bigger details and some better ones up here in the front and we're going to have some other stuff down here but we'll work that out as we go so let's keep on going okay we're back after a short coffee break that lasted about six hours give or take and what I have decided to do is I'm going to have a little bit of water down here. Now, again, this is sort of feel it out as we go kind of thing. So we're coming up. We finished our mid-ground over here on this side. We're going to work on our foreground over here afterwards. But first, we're going to put uh, some nice water over here. So we're going to decide how far we're going to come out with it. And the water's going to start back here. So we're just kind of mimicking the color of the sky that we've got. Okay. And we're just kind of scraping this in there. No big deal. Because we're going to work on reflection and everything later with it. Okay. And we're just getting our, our sky color in there. Lots of white, lots of blue. Mixed together. And we're just getting this in there. Just so we've got it down as a base coat, and then we'll fine tune it later. We're going to put in some simple bricks here, if I can find the right paintbrush. I seem to have misplaced my paintbrushes. There we go. So we're going to take some burnt umber, a little bit of the ivory black. Mix those together, a little bit of the green. Just this is our base rock color, okay? And we're gonna put in a nice rocky shoreline right about here. We're gonna have some nice big guys. And we're just gonna sketch them in. These will take some form when we're highlighting them. And we're gonna I'm just using the paint that's already on the brush and already on the canvas and just sort of working that down into it. Let me give ourselves some side to side lines here. And those are our little reflections. we've got okay might take our little blender brush here and see I'm gonna use a little more pep and just kind of Give those a little bit of scoot. And for our water line here, let this know we've got it. We're mixing a little bit of the white, a teensy bit of blue, mostly the white. Let me get it on the palette knife here. Take a little, little paint and just sort of.
go a little overboard, we'll fill it in. No worries there. Okay. Go right back to our filbert brush that we cleaned off. Hopefully that we cleaned off. Just so it's not so drastic. It's a bit further away. Just softening those lines a little bit. Uh, pushes it into the distance. Okay. Now we're gonna take a bit of the yellow ochre. And uh, raw sienna, get those mixed with a little bit of, a little touch of the titanium white to lighten it up. And we're just going to put the highlights in those rocks. Put white on the canvas. It mixes with all the other colors we've got there. So just get a nice. You don't ever get real pure white. You end up with just a lighter version of what you already have. Okay. And we'll put some grasses in there and stuff. Maybe we'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we will. Uh, we can do that real quick. Do I want to mess with a fan brush or do I use something smaller? Well, of course, you're not supposed to really mess with this brush until you really get down to the to the end here. But I'll just throw a few in there. It's small, but. I like those little details, sometimes far off in the distance. See, nothing too crazy, just something to add a little character to it. Okay, and we're going to start working this way. Time to get to the foreground. Okay, we're going to start working on our foreground here. As you can see, I've just sort of sketched this in. Now, I definitely urge you to draw out what your painting is going to be before you start painting. At least have a little sketch, you know, just a rough sketch. Maybe not on the canvas, but on a piece of paper. Sketch out what you're going to have. Um, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to visualize as you're going along. Say, okay, I want this here, I want this here. And, and you might decide that halfway through you don't like the placement of this rock here you don't like the placement of this tree so you're gonna change it and that's perfectly fine you're gonna add things and change things and mess around with things and we're gonna put some big old rocks in here again I got them sketched in just using the filbert brush and now I'm gonna paint them in using the same brush so of course it's been cleaned off but so we've got a bit of gray and brown and a little bit of blue and this is just putting our base of the rock in here. We're sort of working all over the place. This is where I kind of lose it a little bit just because it's a little bit of switching back and forth. So I apologize in advance uh, if you lose track of where I'm at. But uh, this part's just kind of all over. So I'll be throwing in little details here and there, wherever I feel like doing it, and, and uh, might get a little confusing at times. But just slow down and get in where you gotta get. You know, be, just slow down and and uh, just slow down and paint how you're feeling. 
you know, paint what you feel. A little bit of shadow in between these rocks. Just kind of scratching this in there. We're going to have some more. That's some nice big, big honking rocks. We are on a mountain. So this big wet rocks. You know, they're going to have some shine to them too, but we're just putting those in there. Lots of these big guys. And like I said, we're going to come back and highlight them. So They're big, dark, and scary right now, but we're going to come back and make them a little friendlier later. You hear the cat in the background? I'm not sure how good this mic is at picking up background noise, but if you hear a cat, well, it's just part of the ambiance. Sometimes when you're painting, you see little spots in the background that you need to fix. So I'll just go back and fix them. time for some big old trees to be put in there. Okay, it's time to work on these big trees. <clears throat> this is the part you've been waiting for. Now I'm going to use a actually a synthetic flat brush to just put these in because these synthetic brushes they pick up a lot of paint. Okay, so I've got a mix of ivory black, uh, some burnt umber, and a little bit of Prussian blue, maybe a little sap green in there, lots of paint. So, what I've decided, I'm going to have an evergreen here and a big fat tree right here. So, more of a more of an oak or something like that. So, we're going to start and just start at the bottom, work our way up. And we're just putting a good amount of paint on the canvas because these are our big trees. This is our main trunk of the evergreen here. I'm going to work him up to about there, I think. Not too huge, but getting there. And we're just working this paint down. And I extend it up. Just a little bit. Okay. And we'll work on the branches here in a minute. I just want to get the trunks of my trees put in there. Sienna. And we don't want these to mix barely at all. And we're just gonna drop in some highlights here on the you can't hold too much there. On the sunny side. Some of this you'll be seeing, some of it you won't. I see how it just 
puts texture right on the canvas there. That's what we want. See, I'm just barely touching this, just running it down. That's giving me that nice texture. And sometimes I I just mix the paint right on the brush. I don't recommend that too much because it'll beat up your brushes real quick. corner of the brush we're just putting some spots in there well, I don't want to lose my trunk all together sometimes I get carried away and I, I get rid of my trunk and I didn't mean to but we need to put him back in there. Okay, now we're going to work on some highlights on that pine tree. Make him really stand out. Now for this, I'm going to thin the paint down a little bit. Pine trees are going to pick up a little yellow, but there's also a bit of that white. They're a bit cooler, even the highlighted parts. So we're going to highlight them with more of a pale green kind of color. Almost a blue, but just a cool green. Okay. Because I'm thinning this paint down, it's going to stick right on top, hopefully. And we're just, just touching it. And we don't want to make mud, so we don't want to overmix it on the canvas. And if I don't like the way this looks, I might switch up my brush. But... So far, it's looking okay. So I'm not getting rid of all my dark spots. I'm keeping them there. Okay, we're coming down to the wire here, getting close to the end. Lots of little detail work. You notice a lot of this section is sped up. Uh, but that's because watching me paint tiny little strokes of grass can get really boring. So I've got my spectrum of green here. We're going to use these tiny little brushes. Lots of liner work and little detail work, things like that. So we're going to start with putting some leaves on this tree here. Okay, we're going to start with our darker green, and we're going to do what's been called, or what I learned to be called, as comma strokes. Okay, and comma strokes are just exactly like they sound, just little, little commas. Okay, and that's, we're going to individualize these leaves. Not a ton of paint on the brush, but I want there to seem like there's individual leaves up here and we're going to come back and put some brighter stuff on top and out to the edges and that'll give us this nice lush tree that we're just seeing the top of the or the bottoms of the, of the foliage okay and we're going to cover up some of our branches but not all of it 
And the rule with these is uh, one comma stroke should always touch another one. So you don't want to just, uh, there's one out in the middle of nowhere. We don't want to have that. So we're going to make sure they touch other ones. seeing the tops or the we're just seeing the bottom of this tree so we're not seeing too many leaves you know we're just catching a bit of it out of the top of our eye but it's nice and close up that color down there we're gonna come back with our brighter green and since we want this to stick we might thin out the paint just a little bit <clears throat> and we're gonna do some nice bright leaves that are really catching that sun these overlap I mean don't be afraid of that and a lot of people get freaked out and you can tell when you're just starting out painting that you want all your layers to be separate you want everything to sort of have its own individual space but the real world isn't like that you're gonna have things overlapping and making different colors and Mixing together all in this natural world we've set up. Okay, now we're coming down to here. Let's move this down just a bit. I apologize in advance if my head gets in the way. I usually like to look pretty close. So we've got our spot down here. We've got some darks already painted in with a liner brush. So we're going to do primarily our light colors. We're going to make some little bushes and lots of little grasses and things like that. So we're going to catch the light. So we're mixing our lemon yellow and our sap green that we've got. And if we want to lighten it up even more, like it's really catching the sun, we're going to use some white. Mix it in there, but... We're going to have some areas in shadow too, so we're not going to over highlight it, just put in little things here. Okay, I'd say we'd call that a finished painting. Uh, again, if you want to keep working with yours, add more detail, change the lines, it's your world. You can do whatever you want. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you had fun following along. I had fun doing the painting. 
Um, and I had fun making a video for the first time. So hopefully there will be more. Maybe if more than five people watch this, I'll make another. Hopefully. So keep on pushing paint around.